In this lesson, we're, we look at functions that are linear and then some that are not linear. And we're going to look at how you can tell from a table or a graph whether something's linear or not linear. Um, the graph of a linear function shows a constant rate of change. And remember, the rate of change is something that we call the slope. A nonlinear function does not have a constant rate of change. So its graph is not a line. Next year in algebra, you're going to be looking at um, what types of graphs there are that are not linear because they do have special names. Um, but right now in eighth grade, we just look at lines and linear functions. In example one, you just have to identify whether something's linear or not linear. And remember, the way that you see linear in the table is by seeing a constant rate of change. So you want to look and you want to see what's happening as you go through the table. And as long as it's constant and it's uh, addition or subtraction, then it's linear. So to go from 40 to 32, I subtracted 8. And then 32 to 24 is also a subtract 8. And 24 to 16 is also a subtract 8. So since I have the same relationship happening as I go down the table, this would be linear. Example B, the ratio or the relationship here is plus 9. Then it's plus 22. And that's plus 55. And as soon as you recognize that it's not being added or subtracted by the same number every time, then you write that it is not linear. You can easily look at a graph to see if something's linear. Remember, linear makes a line. So, duh, example A is not a line because lines can't be curved. Remember, we talked about that. So, A is nonlinear. In example B, that is a line, so it's linear. Example 3 asks us which one of these function uh, formulas represents a nonlinear function. So we want to look for what we can write in y equals mx plus b form. So which one can't you write in slope-intercept form? The answer is actually c um, because this would be a horizontal line going through the point 4.7, right? Because you could write it as 0x plus 4.7, y equals. This one, uh, a lot of people p accidentally pick b because they see pi and they figure it's not linear. But remember, pi is just a number. So you could even round this if you wanted to to 3.14x, and then we would write plus 0 because there's no intercept. And in letter D, if you distributed, you'd get y equals 4x minus 4. Remember the distributive property. And that certainly is in slope-intercept form. What makes letter C not in slope-intercept form is because it has the variable in the denominator of a fraction. And that's a dead giveaway that something is not linear when the variable or the x is in the denominator. I want you to write down somewhere over here by letter C that you can't have a variable in the denominator. Last one together, then you'll do a few on your own. Account A earns simple interest and account B earns compound interest. In order to solve this question, you don't need to know the difference between simple and compound interest. I'll explain it when you come to class. It's a different way of calculating the interest on an account. Uh, the table shows the balance after five years. Graph the data and compare the graphs. All right, so I'm going to make a grid, and I'm going to get myself in that first quadrant because it wouldn't um, be realistic for me to have negative money or negative years. And I'll graph account A in red, and account B will be blue. Now, account A, you're going to graph the following points. Look at the table, 0, 100. Then you'll plot 1, 110, 2, 120, 3, 130, 4, 140, and 5, 150. So these are the ordered pairs you're going to plot. So obviously you have to come up with a scale. Let's see if I can go by tens. 
Oh, I can. Oh, fantastic. So I'm going to make a little break here, and I'm going to go by um, tens starting at 100. And this can go by ones. All right, so let me graph account A. Pause the video and graph account A. All right, now for graph B, you're going to graph the same X values, but you're going to pair it up with the Y values that go here. Now I know they're decimals, so you just have to estimate where you think they would be. Pause the video and graph those points. So account B would be an example of nonlinear. Account A would be an example of linear because account A has a constant rate of change. And if I were to use um, some knowledge about slope, I would say that the slope here um, starts getting steeper because it seems like it's going to increase a little quicker. So that would be an example of nonlinear. So now I have to compare the graphs. So I have to write a sentence about what I see. So um, here's what I see. A and B start off the same. But then B increases quicker. Oops, sorry. All right. The examples at the bottom are for you. Pause the video, try them, and when you're ready, I'll put up the answers. All right, one thing I want to point out about letter B is while letter B is made up of two portions of a line, it's not from the same line because this would have to continue this way and this would have to continue this way since it's not one continuous straight line like we graphed in chapter 4. This is an example of nonlinear. Down in letter C, I just rewrote it using slope and intercept. And remember, if you can write it in slope-intercept form, it's linear. So this would be 4 thirds x plus 0. Um, and this is nonlinear because it has an exponent. If you have any questions, write them down and ask me when you come to class.